Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we check in with the Ames Fire Department. So my guest today is Rich Higgins, Deputy Fire Chief with the Ames Fire Department. Rich, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Susan. Well, it's always good to have you here, and there's always so much going on with the Ames Fire Department. This is the season of outdoor fires. Absolutely. A lot of recreational fires, the cooler weather. Um, people like to get out and enjoy a, a fire in their backyard, and yeah, it's definitely this time of year. So we get a lot of questions about this time of year, about burning leaves, which we all know is forbidden in the city of Ames, but there is um, an exception for a recreational fire. Absolutely. We allow people to have recreational fires. We want people to be able to enjoy the outdoors and enjoy a good fire. Um, yeah, we, we ask that you don't burn leaves. What we do allow is that you have dry wood or some type of kindling. Um, no construction debris, but we do allow fires in Ames. Um, there are some requirements though. That has to be in an approved type of uh, fire ring or fire pit, um, a chimney, anything that you can buy at a, a local hardware store. Um, that allows you to have a fire ring or So fire you can ring. have a mobile fire pit metal. Absolutely. Yep. You can even use landscaping blocks if you wanted to build a nicer fire pit that was going to be stationary. But you don't just want a fire in your lawn. Right. Yeah, there there are requirements too that you need to be 15 feet away from any type of combustible structure. So if you have a fence or um, if you have a deck or your house, you need to be 15 foot away from that if you're going to have a recreational fire. And a recreational fire is not a bonfire. Absolutely not. No, a recreational fire is, in fact, we, we ask that you keep it within three foot in diameter and no higher than two foot for your flame. So. And what you might do at a recreational fire is, you know, drink your hot chocolate, roast your marshmallows, maybe bring a hot dog out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Just we want you to be able to get out and enjoy the, the, the great outdoors and uh, enjoy a fire. And a lot of people use them for ceremonial purposes as well. But yeah, it's basically for cooking or just relaxing and enjoying with friends, enjoying time with friends. So. And actually, as summer was winding down, you were starting to see more and more people having those kind of fires outside. It keeps the mosquitoes away, and it's a nice way to get together. It is, absolutely. I, I know at, at our home, we like to get the fire pit out and stay 15 foot away from anything that's uh, combustible. We also make sure that we have a, a water source, something to extinguish the fire. That is a requirement in the city of Ames, is uh, if you are going to have a recreational fire, that you have some type of extinguishing agent. Whether it's a bucket of water, a hose, or even a bucket of dirt is fine. Just something that you could extinguish the fire with. So when the, the event's over and everybody's gone home, you want to make sure that fire's out. Those embers can burn quite warm for quite some time. Absolutely. For me, I fill up my fire pit. I fill it up with water just to make sure it's completely out. That way I don't have to worry about it in the evening. Because we've had fires that have, um, they thought they had the fire out and then later it rekindled and, and ended up catching a garage on fire. So it does happen. So as we get into the cooler months, you'll see more people inside, um, uh, holidays coming up. You'll see um, just a lot more use of candles. Uh, people will get their fireplaces ready to go. What are some tips and things people need to be aware of? Absolutely. The, one of the big things with fireplaces, we ask that you have them checked out yearly by a professional that knows what they're doing. Um, whether your chimney needs to be cleaned out or inspected, we just ask that that be done yearly. Um, and with candles, we want people to be responsible. If you light a candle, you should be around it the whole time. If you're going to leave a room, we recommend you blow that candle out. Also be aware if you have pets or children that they like to play with fire, or play with candles, and they can knock them down. So be aware where they're placed at. Make sure you keep combustibles away from them, um, some type of plate that it can be on so when the wax drips down, it's not dripping on anything that is combustible. So, so there have been a lot of um, advances with the LED candle looking kind of um, decorative um, centerpieces and whatnot. We don't even really need a, a real candle anymore. No, they, they've come a long ways with the LED. They, they can make them flicker like a candle. Um, I know we have some in our house for Halloween that are set up and, and they, they do a great job. I don't have to worry about them burning anything. They don't put off any type of soot or anything. So you don't have to worry about any soot marks on your walls or on the ceilings. Um, just a little battery, turn it on, and when you're done, you turn it off. So, yeah, they've That's come a, a long way. A nice alternative. You mentioned fireplaces. One of the uh, things uh, people get in trouble with is maybe they throw in not necessarily wood in their fireplace, and then they have a problem. Anytime you start burning something other than wood, you're going to end up, the products from combustion that you're putting off will build up on the walls of your chimney, um, such as newspapers. It, it's okay to burn a little bit of newspaper with some kindling to get your fireplace going. We're not saying that you can't do that. But when you start burning any type of trash or leaves or um, anything in your fireplace other than wood, that's when you start running into problems and the, and the fireplace isn't designed for that. So. I know people have, have burned treated wood or 
formerly furniture and have thought, well, it's wood, I'll just throw it in the fireplace. Yeah, absolutely. And even in the recreational fires, we'll get people out there that'll have construction debris that they'll try to sneak into the fire and burn that. And once again, um, especially the treated lumber is not designed to be burned. It actually is putting off a, a chemical. It's off-gassing a chemical that's used to treat the wood to keep it from rotting. So um, when you're having a fire, whether it's uh, indoor in a fireplace or at a recreational fire outside, you need to just use the dry logs, dry wood, or, or kindling. You don't want to burn anything else. So, so you mentioned combustion. Um, one of the problems with combustion is the potentially dangerous gases as we get into cooler weather and people get the, their furnaces up and running. What are some things they need to be careful about? Yeah, so that whenever we think of the cooler temperatures in furnaces, we start thinking of carbon monoxide poisoning, which is a silent, deadly gas that you can't see it, you can't smell it, you have no idea it's there. Um, the only way to know it's there is to actually have a carbon monoxide detector, which we recommend that you have one on every floor of your home. It doesn't need to be necessarily next to a, a water heater or your furnace. It just needs to be, in fact, we recommend you have it closer to where your sleeping quarters are at on every floor of the home. Um, we also ask that you have your uh, furnaces checked out yearly just to make sure that there's no cracks um, that would produce the carbon monoxide because what will happen is uh, you actually get a crack in your furnace which will allow instead of that gas venting up it can actually vent into the home or you can even have uh, we've run into situations where squirrels or birds have built nests in the exhaust piping for a water heater or even the furnace um, and that will allow the the carbon monoxide to build up in the home and not be able to get out so have your furnaces checked and have carbon monoxide detectors. Which also leads to the next one, which is smoke detectors. I know that you, uh, all firefighters, are big proponents of smoke detectors and, and the extra time that they give somebody if there is an incident. Absolutely. It's, it's been proven smoke detectors save lives. And this year, we're actually in fire prevention month of October, and it's going on this week. And this year's theme is smoke detectors save lives, check yours monthly. Um, and that's been a little bit of a change. Most people were checking them when we had daylight savings time. When we roll back our clocks, which is coming up uh, at the beginning of next month, I believe, they'd actually, that's when they were checking their smoke detectors. Well, we've, we've changed our stance on that. We want you checking them monthly, make sure they work. We still recommend changing your batteries out when it's daylight savings time. That's a great time to do it, to change your batteries. That way you know it's a fresh battery in there. But check them monthly. Um, we also recommend, uh, as far as placement, a lot of people, we get calls, trying, people want to know, where should I put smoke detectors in my home? We recommend you have a smoke detector on every level of your home. We also recommend that you put one in every bedroom, every sleeping room, and then also one outside of the sleeping quarters. Um, it's a cheap investment, really, if you think about it, to save your family. And that extra time that smoke detector is going to buy you to get out of your house is going to make the difference whether you can get out of there or if somebody has to come in and try to get you out. So, well, Very important messages. Again, the reminder to check the smoke detector each month to make sure it works and to get those batteries changed. Uh, with uh, daylight savings time. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, you mentioned Halloween. Halloween is always a fun holiday, but often involves a lot of, uh, oh, jack-o'-lanterns with candles inside them, and sometimes people use candles to decorate. So Halloween comes with safety messages as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Any, we want people to think as fire prevention is it's a year-round process. Yes, we do take one week just to celebrate and highlight fire safety, but fire safety is a a day in day out um, process that you need to be thinking about it's a, a safety concern always fire safety is um, with halloween um, yes there are the concerns with candles and, and where people are placing them there's also concerns with the children being out and, and wearing reflective um, clothing if they're going to be out on the sidewalks or crossing streets so we can see them so that's definitely a concern from a fire standpoint but then also from a just a public general public safety to be aware um, with kids wearing costumes and masks that maybe they can't see out of that well um, for everybody just to, to raise their level of alertness as they're driving and around on Halloween night. So, Yeah, lots of messages there from the fire department. Um, uh, fire Safety Week continues, and you really, as you said, fire safety should be a year-round concern. Uh, any final messages as we get into the cooler weather? Yeah, so the fire department has actually put together a checklist for recreational fires. For the people in the public, they want to make sure that they're doing it right. You can go to our website, go to the City of Ames website, click on Departments under Fire, and under our document downloads, there's the actual check form that we use when we come out if we get a call for a complaint um, that you can look at and you can make sure that your fire is within the recreational fire code for the City of Ames. Well, you know, as it gets cooler, you'll just see more and more of those recreational fires popping up. Um, it's such a great way to enjoy being outside with still being uh, having a warming element next to you. And so I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that will want to access that information to ensure they're doing it correctly. 
Absolutely. And if any time anybody has any questions, please feel free to call us at the fire station. We're always available. We're happy to come out and inspect your fire pit or your fire ring before you do a fire if you want to make sure you're in compliance. So. Well, that's great. I know that the fire department stayed busy this summer um, coming out to block parties. That was a really a nice um, uh, service that you provide to, the, to city neighborhoods that um, if they're having a block party, they can has, have firefighters come out and uh, give the children some safety messages. Absolutely. We, we love to go out and visit with our neighbors. Um, the whole city of Ames are our neighbors with three fire stations. Um, you're not too far away from a fire station at all. So we want to get out, get to know our our neighbors and we have frisbees we bring out, we have stickers, hats, coloring books. Um, we, we like to show off the truck. We like their, I like the people of city, of the city of Ames to be able to see what, what we have on our fire truck. We have a lot of neat equipment and, and it's also a great time to share the message of fire safety and, and get the word out of what people can do to stay set fire safe. So if you missed that opportunity this, this summer, remember for 2015, the fire department is available to come to your neighborhood block party and uh, provide some of that fire safety message. Rich, thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Thank you, Susan. Well, again, if you want information about the fire department, go to our website at cityofames.org. We have the fire safety checklist for outdoor fires, as well as a lot more information. Uh, we've mentioned a little bit about Halloween. Remember, Halloween is Friday, October 31st this year with trick-or-treating between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. Also, another event to put on your calendar is the groundbreaking ceremony for the water treatment facility. That groundbreaking is at 1 p.m. on Thursday, October 16th. We're going to break ground on the new water treatment facility located at 1800 East 13th Street. We'd love to see you. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.